Italian Malachi chapter 3, or Malachi, Jewish, number 3. Behold, I will send my messenger. This is the mission of John the Baptist. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, O oh, capital L O R D, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. A lot in here. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come saith the Lord of hosts. So what's the opening of the gospel? He shall come. John the Baptist came. Jesus enters into the temple several times. But who may abide the day of his coming? A lot of people did, didn't they? When Jesus came, when he was born, when he was baptized, wasn't there a lot of people there? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, cleaning, and like fuller soap. It's like it's a real harsh, acidy kind of soap that cleans. So this messenger will proclaim a person that will be cleaning. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Redemption. Okay, now, all right, first coming, yeah. He shall purify the sons of Levi. The priests are the ones that turn Jesus Christ over to the Roman government. That's not purification. And yet, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, many believed on him. Nebuchadnezzar, I'm not Nebuchadnezzar. Um, now I said Nebuchadnezzar, I can't think of his name now. Nicodemus. A few others. John of Aramatha. They believed. They were of the of the of the be of ofs. Sons of Levi, that was chapter two. And Levi still continued and purged them as gold and silver through fire. They may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Is that happening today? Has that happened since the first coming of Jesus Christ? Absolutely not. Do you know what remarkable thing about the 144,000? Levi is mentioned as a tribe among the 144,000. Dan and Ephraim are left out. Levi is mentioned as one of the Jehovah Witnesses. And I ain't talking about the idiots that run around today. I'm talking about the true Jehovah Witnesses. That Jacob's trouble is going to purify the tribe of Levi. So when they can set up and do the service in the, in the temple when Jesus is there. Did you read in, in the Kings when they've got right? They had to get all the priests right. One time they, they had to uh, postpone, the postpone the Passover. There was another time that there weren't even enough priests. They had to let the Levites. Now, all priests are Levites. But not all Levites are priests. Got to get that. So there was a time when, you know, they got right. And there was just so much work to do. Levites had to do the priestly job while the priests were clear, are, were purifying themselves. This is what's going on right now. 
the Levite tribe, whoever they are, wherever they are, they're involved in great sin. Check their wallets. Is there an inscription or a picture on their wallets of the money? That's a violation of the second commandment. And don't tell me they don't love that George Washington, Franklin, and all that. Because they're a money-hungry people. They want more. I'm not ratifying. I'm not mocking the Jews. It's, it's true. They want money and they got it. May offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. That's going to be the millennium. It's going to be the second advent into glory. Then shall the offering of Judah in Jerusalem be present unto the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. When did he become big L to all capital? Now, I don't got to be careful here. When Jesus Christ was in the human flesh, he was 100% human and 100% God. You know what he told the people one time? He says, only my father knows the day and hour. There were, I don't know how to say it, there were certain restrictions upon Jesus Christ being in the flesh. He was God, right? You remember what he did in the back of a boat on a pillow? Do you remember what he did when he walked in the temple and found that they were using it wrong? He got angry. Remember what happened when he went to a friend's funeral? You ever read Genesis to Malachi, God cried? Tears? When did God ever visit a funeral? Je Listen, we studied Genesis 1 to Malachi 3. You got one more chapter left. When did God ever attend a funeral? When did God ever fall asleep? So the Lord Jesus Christ became man. Now he says capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, even though he's always been Lord Jehovah. You remember when he was on the cross? When sin became him? God turned out the lights, turned everything off, and looked away. He says, as Moses lifted up his, the serpent in the world, at that point, you got to be very careful. Jesus became sin, and he somehow took part of Satan when he went into hell. When he died, he went into hell. The rich man died, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes. It is finished, and he gave up the ghost, and then he went to hell. Crossed the gulf, met the dying, repented thief, and said, let's go. That's how Jesus Christ can sit capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D today. As in the days of old. As in the former years. What do we learn from chapter 2? Levites please God. He was happy with them. He smelled that smell. He said, mm, I love it. They're not like that again. There's no offering today. I will come near to you to judgment. Uh-oh. I will be as a swift witness against the sorcerers. Harry. You know how many Christians are involved with Harry? And against the adulterers. Uh-oh. And against the false swearers. Uh oh. And against those that oppress the hireling in his wages. Now, what's a hireling? That's someone who gets paid to do work. All right, sorcerers. I well, ain't so. Well, magic. Adulterers. We know what an adulterer is. False swearers. They make an oath and they don't back it up. They sign their name and don't do what they signed their name. And those that are oppressed are hiring. You're not giving fair wages to your employer. 
employee. What about false swears? Why is it when, when a mortgage or anything like that, did you guys, I am going definitely going to pay this thing in 12 months. Why do they get worried like that? You don't know what's going to happen in 12 minutes. Why do they make it so stiff? There will not be a law for minimum wage. You're supposed to rightly treat your employee. If there was no minimum wage law, you would get away not even paying them at all. And the law wasn't 40 hours, anything over that. Over time, you have them work over 40 hours and still get minimum pay. If it wasn't for the law. Call that democracy, isn't it? The widow. She has no stand. She has no occupation. She has no, Her husband's died. And she may be even the one that's working for the low wages. I met them. And the father lives. The dad's gone. And because of their situation, you take advantage of them. That's just as bad as an adulterer. Don't go be preaching adultery and, and then you know people who are not paying their employees properly. You're not giving the widows her fair, fair share. And Paul laid out the rules for widows in 2 Timothy. And along with adulterers, don't forget, sorcerer shows up too. Magic. It's right there. And that turn aside the stranger from his right. That's a Gentile. Amos 5, 12, Isaiah 10, 1. If a Gentile comes up and he's got a right, you're a dead dog. Jonah was guilty of that. Jonah wanted Nineveh dead. Burnt, fried, crispy. That's why he hanged around his little booth. Didn't it say in Jonah of chapter 4, he made a booth and stood to see what God would do? That's what Jonah was guilty of. Peter, go to the, go to, uh, to the, uh, the Roman uh, Cornelius house. Lord, I would never done anything unclean. You turn aside from his right? What would be right in Cornelius? To know Jesus Christ. All right, you sign a paper that you're going to pay something, and they're not saved, and you don't do it. You turn them from the right. You're guilty. And I've been guilty of that. And that's under the blood. And may God show me mercy and grace when I got to reap what I sow. But if I ever have to do that again, I'm going to put more conditions on my side. Hey, I can't guarantee 12 years. For I am the Lord. Wait a minute. Verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek. That's God. That's that's Jesus Christ coming after John the Baptist. We are on the same subject, the same speaker, verse 6, for I am the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Yahweh, Jehovah. That's Jesus Christ. Are you a Gentile in Jehovah Witnesses? I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You have just thrown away <coughs> the Jehovah Witness religion. You have just thrown away those people that will say God's offerings with the Jews.
How many years have there been Jews since Abraham, Isaac, Jacob? And why are they not consumed? Verse 6. I am the Lord. I changed. I made an oath to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to the twelve tribes, Moses, Joshua, the kings, David, Solomon. I change not. I'm not going back on my oath. I'm not going to commit adultery against you. I am not going to use sorceries. I am not going to oppress the hired. I'm going to give you what your, your just deserves. I will take care of you, the widow. I will take care of the father. Didn't he, wasn't there a widow that had children and a pot of oil? Wasn't there a widow woman who was gathering two sticks for her son and, and her to have her last meal and God took care of her? See, these stories with the followers and the, and the widow supposed to bring you back into the book Say, I heard a story. There will be death in the millennium. And God will take care of the widow and the fatherless. You're not going to take a Gentile and turn him aside from the wrong way in the millennium. There will be no adultery and sorcery and witchcraft. You're not going to have a false oath in the millennium. And the Jewish people are around today and will be around forever. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob. Not Abraham. He says Jacob. What's Jacob? The 12 tribes are not consumed. Are the sons of Jacob consumed? Of course not. There's Jews today. Why? Because God doesn't change. Have you heard that verse ever quoted to you? I am the Lord, I change not. Yeah, that's one of the verses they throw at you. But they never finish it. That's a semicolon. That's not a period. There's a sentence structure on both sides of that punctuation. Oh boy, not, I'm using my English. Both of those sentences can be separate causes all by themselves, yet that semicolon supports both of them together i gotta stop that before i get freaky even from the days of your fathers now we're talking about the sons of jacob so we may be now moving to the entire 12 tribes ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them can you find that anywhere in the Bible? First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, First Kings, Second Kings, First Samuel, Second Samuel, Exodus, Numbers. It's all over the place, isn't it? And have not kept them. Return unto me. There is the definition of repentance. You are moving away from God. You are going further and further away from God. And God says, stop, turn around, get over here. And when you do that, that's repenting. And I will return unto you. Wait a minute, if God returned, what's that tell you? I left you. You left me, I left you. So when you start to return, Isaiah 118, God begins his route back, right back to you. The day that you got saved, you called all heaven to attention according to the Bible. All the angels in heaven got attention. And God, I don't know where, if you know, I don't care if you sat, if you laid down, whatever you did. At that place, you ask Christ to save you. God met you there before you even got there. God beat you to your Calvary. Because Jesus died long before I was born. God beat me to my Bethel. God already knew I was going to get saved and he met me there. Say, how you, how you doing? But God, don't you have to keep the plans? Don't you have to feed the way? I, I can stop all that. You are going to receive Christ as, as your Savior, my son. I'm, how are you doing?
You know, there has been a place in my life. I can't give you the exact time. It was afternoon. There's been a place in my life, and you are a born-again Christian. There's a place in your life that you've been completely sinless. The moment that you asked Jesus Christ into your life, if you would have died at that second, you had gone to heaven, you would have had no sins on your account. How do you like that? But you would have no crowns either, no rewards. God meets you when you begin to return. I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. The host. God of everything. The God of all the angels. The God of all the planets. Of all the armies in the earth. Because he controls both armies. His and others. Will start to return when you return. When you're about to, to aid someone getting saved by Christ, do you realize in that moment of presence, there's God with you? I've, I've had it in prison. Prison seems a place where I've got people who they receive Christ. And when you sold that seed, guess who else is there? Satan. But, He say, wherein shall we return? They ignore the call of God. Satan has grabbed the seed. He's taken it from their heart. <clears throat> They're not going to turn. They gave an excuse. God says, you turn, I will turn unto you. But they say, Why, wherein shall we return? We're not going to do it. We're not going to get right. Will a man rob God? That's a, it's just weird how that just shows up when we talk about turning. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? in tithes and offerings ooh ooh that hit hard that hit the wallet you can be accused of being in theft thou shalt not steal when there's no tithes and offerings Paul says for the Christian cheerful giver if you're not going to offer to God and cheerful I have to do it net or gross don't give it you're not giving a good God ain't going to credit it there's a Christian supposed to tie no a Christian supposed to give willingly wantingly well if you don't give Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, before you go put this down on the radio, who has been the subject? Verse 6. Ye sons of Jacob, this is not to the church. If you don't give your money to church, you know, you're going to be cursed. I don't know about that. I believe God wants you to give, and if you don't, he'll take. Nature says if somebody does something for you, you owe them. That's, that's a nature call. God gave you the money that you have. What, what's so bad about giving it back to him a little what he compares? He only asked for 10% times. You get 90 I give more. How much? I ain't telling you. In your business. Tithes is 10%. Anything over the tithes is an offering. So if you get an offering envelope and you don't tithe, you have lied in the basket. You ever think about that? 
Tithes is 10%. Offering is over the tithe. I put my money in the offering envelope. It's under the tithe. You lied to God. You lied to the church. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even the whole nation. Now, Israel was cursed. God wrote out what they were supposed to get. <coughs> Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Hebrews 7, 1. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 8, 12. That there may be meat in my house for the priests, for the Levites. And prove me now wherewith, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The book of Acts. The church in Jerusalem was starving with a dirt. The missionary church had to send relief to Jerusalem. Paul had rags, jail. You trying to tell me Paul never gave money? Philippians. I can do through all things through Christ who strength and blah, blah, blah. You know those nice little samplers? They can say that because they were giving money from their heart, doing what God wanted them to do, and God was blessing them and putting it to their account because they were doing what they were doing through love and wanting to give. How's that? Now, is it a command to say, you must give? No, it's not. Should you give? Yes. Should you tithe? Yes. Should you make an offering? Yes. It's the least you can do. And it does work. And God does bless you. But I'm not going to say, you know, give $10 and God will give you 100 I'm not going to say that. But you know what? I've seen it work. I control the checkbook in my house. And I'm not doing prosperity. I want to make that thing up. I don't know how God makes that checkbook work, but he does. But let me tell you, I've already said I give above the tithe. I'm not telling you how much. I offer the missionaries. And other things. You don't need to know. I've got bills in my files right now that I owe. And I'm, I'm bopping in the water. According to this verse, because I tithe and give an offering, I'm supposed to be living in a mansion. This ain't no mansion. Because if I were living in a mansion, I would have a building that would be completely climate controlled to be 68 degrees, nothing less, nothing further. I'm not living in that. I also have a thing that says, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. What do you say, Brother Hayward, about giving? Give to God. How? Through a loving heart. Cheerfully. Yeah, there'll be times I put that, oh, Lord. There's been times, oh, Lord, if I don't give the time, I can't. <clears throat> I've gone through those. And I've written that check out. The first check I make out is to the church. They got the first number of the series of, of my pay stubs or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, someone's heard this and they turn it off. It's going to speak about money. God can bless, but I don't want to get prosperity. I don't want to say give and God's going to bless you, but he does bless you. Just not with a fortune. But, yeah, it's a fortune. And wait till you get the glory. You will walk on a street of gold, which man value today is money. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Somebody who eats everything up. Bills. Hospital. Doctors. Utility. Your adversary is a lion seeking... Whoa, look at that one. Run that cross-reference. You know who gave Job 
the uh, the boils Satan did so if he had to go to a doctor and pay for the doctor to help him who would have caused that bill Satan now if you smoke drink and all that you got a bad lung bad liver and all that that's your fault and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground that is Jewish land in the millennium the priests were to live off the offerings that the people brought remember it said in the law after this piece after all the fat is because you couldn't have fat after all the fat was burnt off you were to take it and you can bring it home and give it to your family Eli's sons went in there before it was even ready stuck in the fork and started eating it was their meal you brought the flour and all that. <coughs> that was theirs. They could eat it or they could sell it and get money. That was their living. Neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time of the field. It's not going to weather up. It's not going to die. All these blessings are in the millennium. But God is saying 397 BC, if you get right, if you turn to me, if you will offer to me, what is the next great event coming to Israel? You just said it. Jesus is coming. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Now let me ask you a question. Verse 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You wonder if Israel had gotten right under the preaching of Malachi. You wonder maybe it would have been 400 years. What if at that moment, yeah, God, we what, 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 read it, read it, read it. Verse 7. Even I'm not I'm not doing false prophecy, but say if they had listened to Malachi, even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. You're sinners. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. Behold, I will send my messenger. You know what Malachi means? Now let's get this. Malachi means my messenger. Now, is that a hunky-dory? It looks like if they had listened to Malachi, Jesus Christ <coughs> may have showed up earlier than 400 years. They didn't listen. 400 years later, what is the money Israel is using? Temple money or what? Caesar's money. They're under Rome when Jesus comes. What do they want Jesus to do? Wipe out the Romans. Wipe out the Gentiles. Become king. Give us, give us bread and fish to feed the multitudes at free charge. Malachi means my messenger. Now, is that doctrine I would... I would put my my resources upon, put all my faith on that if they believed on Malachi, Jesus Christ would have came earlier? Absolutely not. But it's something to think about. We don't know because they never did get right. Before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Jesus walked up to a fig tree, cursed it, and it withered up. And all nations shall call you blessed. Is that today? You know what all nations call Israel today? Dead. A missionary in a, in a Middle East country told me that in the public schools over there, when you pull up a Middle East map, Israel is not even mentioned on it. I always whacked my head. I always wanted, forgot to ask the guy what's there. For ye shall be a delightsome land. Is that a delightsome land? Saith the Lord of hosts. That's millennium. Your words have been stalled against me. Saith the Lord. Yet ye say, 
what have we spoken so much against thee? So see, God just told you what stopped me. You've been talking against me. You're not talking right about me. You're bad-mouthing me. Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. Ooh. Didn't we learn that in chapter 2 last night? It's, it's the same old thing. We're tired of tradition. We're tired of doing the same bread, same service, same. And now they're saying, you know what? It's just vain. God, you're not going to do nothing for us. God, you're empty. And what profit, money, is it that we have kept his ordinance? God, we've been running this church just like you're supposed to, just like our grandparents, like our great-grandparents, just like the revivalists before us and all that. And we don't have crowds. We don't have money. The tithing's not overflowing. And we're in debt. And we got all kinds of problems. And, well, first of all, God said, because you're robbing him. And he said, because you haven't returned back to him. That we have walked morning, morningfully <laughs> before the Lord of hosts. Psalm 37. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. <laughs> Do you remember that word set up? You know where that word showed up? Oh man, over and over in one chapter? When Nebuchadnezzar set up his image? Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Oh! Come on, God, show me a sign. Now, I'm not saying a Christian who, who wants to do right. I'm not saying a Christian who puts the fleece out there. I'm talking about some idiot. Uh, you know, if, if you're really doing what you're supposed to, where's the crowns? If God's really there, you know, why are there wars and all that? They're saying the unrighteous, the unholy, God is delivering them. To good. Then they that fear the Lord spank often one to another. Encouraged, confessed, shared. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord and that thought upon his name. Everybody's doing wicked. The whole world's going to hell. And there's a few that say, God is faithful. This is the book. This is what God has told you to do. Go in all the world, preach the gospel, put the crap away. Sing the old hymns. Get rid of the worldly instruments. Let's do what God has told you to do. Brother, I'll pray for you. Sister, do you need help? Oh, let's get together. Let's do right. There's no clicks. There's no sin. Let's do what God, what God says. I'm recording that. And we're talking about Jews. Okay? We're not talking about the church. So Revelation 20, and the books were open, and their works were judged, and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him. That may be one of those books that show up at the Great White Throne Judgment. Lord, why aren't you going to throw me in that lake of fire? Because I remembered what you spoke about me. And your works prove that you love me. Old Testament, Jew. Not New Testament, not Christian. And they shall be mine. Save the Lord of hosts. What did they do to get right with God? They feared the Lord. You know what pride, wickedness is not? It's not fearing the Lord. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them, 
as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. 1 Corinthians 3.12 Picks up a stone. That's mine. That belongs right there. That particular spot. Son, you've done a lot of work for me. Didn't Jesus speak about a parable about two sons? I will, but what didn't? I will not. I better go. Then shall ye return. Return. Where'd you go? Return unto me, and I will return unto you. And discern between righteous and the wicked. Well, the world ain't doing that. Here's a division. Righteous and wicked. There's nothing in the middle. Between him that serveth God, nothing in the middle, and him that serveth him not. Verse 18 does not leave any room for lukewarmness. You know what God said? Because I wish you were cold, not serving me. I write you to be hot, serving me. But because you're lukewarm, you make me sick. How do you stand with God? Is he ready to pick you up a jewel, a reward? Or is he grabbing your bark bag? 